This week on the Honor Roll Podcast, we're looking into leadership, service, professional development, and success with two students who were recently nominated for the MUMA College of Business 25 Under 25 program. Stay tuned. Hey, Honors Bulls, welcome to the Honor Roll Podcast, the flagship podcast of the Judy Genshaft Honors College Podcast Network. I am your host, Fabiana Rakenna, a second-year student studying marketing and business analytics at the University of South Florida and a member of the Honors College. Today, my co-host is Caroline Merriman, a third-year student studying English and biology. How's it going, Caroline? Hi, I'm great. I'm happy to be back on the podcast today. Wonderful. And as always, we like to start off the podcast with one big question. So my question for this week is, where do you see yourself in five years? Wow, that is definitely a loaded question. I think my path is like a bit uncertain right now. Um, But what I'm looking forward to most is possibly doing a master's in like wildlife ecology or conservation and then going to get a PhD afterwards so I can like do research in that field. Right. And I know you're a really strong writer, so I'm excited to see how you tie that into your more like ecological uh, avenues that you want to go down. Yeah, I think it's going to be really interesting to try and find like the intersection of two things that seem really different. Right. So how are you looking to like kind of bring your passions and like your your like educational background together in the future? Well, I kind of see myself just working after graduation. My main passion is marketing. So I want to try to go into like some corporate agency and then maybe in a year or two trying something a little bit more creative. And then I want to go do my master's. So get Mm -hmm. an MBA uh, once I have a little bit more of that experience. And then I want to transition to consulting when I'm ready to like settle down. I think consulting sounds great, giving you like a lot of the financial freedom but with the same time like freedom of like you can kind of live where you want to yeah live. work where you want to De- yeah. definitely because I definitely want to travel places so I'm excited about that and on the topic of achievement and milestones today we have Yuki Shao and O Carson Phils two honor students who were recently nominated for the MUMA College of Business 25 under 25 program which recognizes students who have demonstrated success in their academics leadership professional development and community service And they're here today to talk with us about their USF experiences and what set them apart as members of this year's class of 25 under 25. I'm Charles Adams. I'm the Judy Genshaft Endowed Honors Dean at the Judy Genshaft Honors College at USF. To someone considering the Honors College, I would say get here as fast as you can. It's an amazing community. It's a community full of like-minded people who have lofty goals for themselves, who are serious about their studies, and who want to make a difference in the world. And it is extremely exciting to be part of that community. All right, today we have Yuki Shao and O Carson Phils joining us to talk about their recent nominations for the USF MUMA College of Business 25 Under 25 program. Welcome to the podcast, guys. Would you like to introduce yourselves? My name is O'Carson Phils. I'm a fourth year student, a senior um, here at USF, studying business analytics and information systems. Um, I was born in Kansas City, Kansas, but I moved to Tampa when I was three, and I've been here pretty much since then. And um, I'm a very active student on campus. I'm involved in too many student organizations. Um, (laughs) I've been an RA. And after graduation, I'll be working for City as a technology analyst. Congratulations. Yeah, congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Yuki Xiao. I'm a senior as well, I'm graduating soon enough. Um, pretty involved on campus as well. Uh, e board of about three or four organizations out there. Um, art is kind of my passion, but I am mm-hmm. a double major in accounting and business analytics. And I'm very excited to be here. I actually saw Yuki at the farmer's market with your little, yes. yeah, yeah, with your prints yes. and the clothes that you upcycled, mm-hmm. so that was really cool. Yeah, the Agrarian Club hosted um, a farmer's market, and it was, like, very much sustainability for Climate Week uh, action, and, yeah, I got to be a part of it. It was really nice. Yeah, it was really nice. Oh, you were selling art there? Yes, yeah, so I work with, like, upcycled clothing mm-hmm. and printing on them and making them, like, having a second life again, mm-hmm. so. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, very nice. So can you start off by telling us what 25 Under 25 is and how you learned about it? 
Yes. So 25 Under 25, it is a MUMA College of Business program, and they recognize 25 students out of the entire College of Business for most remarkable, I think it's in four areas, like academics, achievement, scholarship, involvement, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think think there's about 1,500 students in the College Mm -hmm. of Business. So mm-hmm. it's a very exclusive award. Yeah, <laughs> I was yeah. super honored to be part of it. And um, yeah, the award recognizes you for, I think it's scholarship, professional development, leadership, and community and campus service. So it's kind of a, te- not a test, but <laughs> uh, a, a, a recognition mm-hmm. of how involved are you on campus? True. Um, how professionally developed are you? And how are you doing in school? Right. And how did you guys learn about it and know that you wanted to apply for it? Um, let's see. Oh, I learned about it. Um, so one of the orgs I'm part of on campus is called Delta Sigma Pi. It's a professional business fraternity. Mm-hmm. We provide like professional development, social events and mentoring to different students. And it's a pretty high quality group of business students. We usually have one to three brothers in the fraternity who get the award every year. And I joined Delta Sigma Pi back in my sophomore year, and I saw two people get the award, and I was like, ooh, those guys are, are <laughs> exceptional. I want to be like that one yeah. day. So I've always had it as my, as my top goal to apply mm-hmm. in the College of Business. Yeah, the first time I noticed that award, it was kind of just walking into class because they have the honorees show up on the mm-hmm. billboard yes. every so often, and it's like 30 seconds of very awkward yeah. posing. And I was like, oh, that seems interesting. <laughs> I wonder what that is. So I looked it up, and I was like, oh, wow, like every one of the applicants are like very exceptional. And I was like, let me, let me apply and see. Yeah, so that's kind of mm-hmm. how I found out about it. With it being like the top award for business students, I think it's just like really integrated, like within the culture of business, like everyone knows about 20, 25 and 25 and everyone is like looking forward to see if like one of their friends or if someone they know is like going to win the award like the following semester. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So with it being kind of such a competitive and like sought out award, what was the application process like? Ooh, yeah, I could talk a lot about that. <laughs> So I actually applied for the award twice, and I got mm-hmm. it my second time. And essentially the requirements for the award are two recommendation letters. The application says that they're optional, but if you really want the award, <laughs> no, you should get those recommendation optional. letters. True, true, true. Yeah. So those recommendation letters and then also a resume and finally an essay essentially describing your accomplishments in the scholarship, professional development, community campus service, and leadership aspects that the award focuses on. About 750 words. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had to really revise my essay like over and over again. Because this, actually, funny enough, was also my second time applying Mm -hmm. this last semester. (laughs) And I was like, I gotta gotta make it my best (laughs) one. So, yeah, the essay portion, I think, was pretty huge, and also the letter of Rex as well. I really paid attention to, like, which professors kind of knew me the most Mm -hmm. and can really, like, speak for my character, and I think that played out really well. Yeah, exactly. To to students who want to apply for the award, I would definitely tell them to build strong relationships with um, their professors, of course, but also any professional contacts they may have, like your boss at work or even your boss from your work (laughs) last year Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. any mentor that you have on campus. Like I had this semester when I applied for the award, I had my program manager from my summer internship at City write me a recommendation letter. And I also had a professor from one of my honors classes Mm -hmm. write me a recommendation letter. So the letters are very important. Yeah. So, O Carson, you've transitioned from biomedical engineering to business analytics. What sparked your interest in the business field and what caused that shift from that past career trajectory to the one that you have now? Oh, yes. That's the <laughs> That's the burning question. Story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was I came into USF as a biomedical engineering major back in fall 2020. I initially wanted to be a, a medical scientist because I'm passionate about developing treatments for a lot of different age-related diseases, Mm -hmm. 
heart disease, cancer, that kind of stuff. I wanna, I'm really passionate about making better treatments for that. And as I was taking the classes, I, I was thinking about, is this the right major for me? Mm-hmm. And I eventually ended up coming to the conclusion that I think that as a person, I was like, if I just become one more scientist, it's not going to be enough of an impact on the field. Mm-hmm. I really want to make a bigger impact. So what if I move to study business, learn how the business world works, learn what it takes to become financially successful, um, eventually start my own company, and then after I become successful in the business world, I'd like to be able to use the financial resources and wealth that I've gained to donate and invest mm-hmm. in a lot of like the big institutions and organizations doing the important research so I can help a lot of scientists out that way. Mm-hmm. So that's what prompted me to look at the College of Business. And then I was like, okay, now which wager do I have to pick in the College of Business? Because mm-hmm. coming from like, like a medical background. <laughs> um, I didn't know anything about the different majors in the College of Business. I just knew like business majors exist. <laughs> so I was looking at, you know, accounting, marketing, um, finance, and I eventually ended up settling on business analytics because I thought it was a good blend between business and mm-hmm. technology. Since I wanted to start my own company one day, um, the startup industry and ecosystem is pretty heavily focused on having a good understanding of business and technology. So um, in my business analytics classes, I really enjoyed getting to know like how the business side works and also learn a bit of like programming skills. Like I can keep up with the AI hype nowadays and actually understand (laughs) what's going on because I have a little bit more of a technology background for my major. I think that's really cool to hear because I think a lot of students here struggle with having a lot of interests and a lot of passions and then figuring out, well, how do I turn this into a career and what's a career and what's a hobby and and how do I make the most fulfilling life for myself? So what was it like to shift over into business? Like, was there a shift you noticed within yourself of like, oh, I feel more fulfilled than I did in like my last, you know, um, degree course or something like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can definitely say 100 percent. I love being a business major (laughs) so much. (laughs) I've Mm -hmm. had a really um, enjoyable time. Um, The College of Business provides so many resources Mm -hmm. that I take full advantage of. And I, you know, I enjoy getting dressed up in the suit (laughs) (laughs) and all that stuff. But um, I'd say it's a really, really good change for me. Um, I enjoy it because... um, (laughs) One of the things for me was also as a scientist, I know you have to publish a lot of Mm -hmm. research paper. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm okay with writing, but it can be difficult for me to turn out those long essays. So Mm -hmm. I was like, um, in the business world, um, I become very good at like networking, talking and meeting new people. So I'd say I I think I'm able to utilize a lot more of my strengths in yeah. the business world. Yeah, that's cool that you've had that like sense of reassurance of like, I'm kind of like on the right path now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And then Yuki, you ended up picking two majors. Can you tell us why those piqued your interest and why you decided to go for two? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, college was a really foreign concept for me. Both my parents never like went to a higher education at all. And my dad dropped out of high school. So it's it was a really like blank map. And I was honestly just wondering like what really is the best path for me so when my parents came to like America they kind of built themselves up from the ground up and my dad actually has a restaurant in like the West Chase Oldsmart area for about the past 20 years and I've always kind of looked up to him since it's like he's never really had any schooling but he's still able to build himself that business and sustain himself that way and provide for like like all my siblings and I so going to college, I was like, okay, I feel like business might be the path for me just because I feel like I exemplify a lot of his work ethic that he's passed down. So going into um, USF, I was actually a management major. 
And through like the beginning classes, I took like principles of financial accounting with Jennifer Canis, and that really made me fall in love with the subject. <laughs> yes. um, I really liked the way she taught, and I think I just love like the whole debits and credits thing. <laughs> that like accounting concept felt to me like solving puzzles more mm-hmm. so than like work. So then I was like, oh, like I'm gonna completely change my major and pursue this. And the other accounting classes at like USF Muma have been like incredible for me. Mm-hmm. Dr. Park especially, I really loved his class and the way he structured it and just how kind and like he really looks out for his students. And I think that speaks a lot for the subject, like the mm-hmm. professors there really like moved me and I was like, oh my gosh, like eventually I feel like I do want to come back and pursue like a PhD and study yeah. like accounting even more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's like why I picked that class just because when I first came into it, I was like, I really do love the subject and the teacher. And then my business analytics class came about when um, I've always liked I've always been intrigued by like web design Mm -hmm. and coding just Mm -hmm. because you don't really learn about that anywhere else. And I was like, if I'm going to pay a lot of tuition for this, (laughs) I might as well gain a skill that I like don't really know. Mm -hmm. So I started going into that class and I'm actually able to use a lot of the skills like the Python and like the HTML to actually make a website for my art. And I was able to code that from scratch and also add like this neat little aspect of like a bidding concept. So it's like it has Mm -hmm. all my artwork, the descriptions and like the display, but then it's like people can bid on it. And I think that might be even cooler to invest Mm -hmm. and move that into other spaces, too, like for galleries to host Mm -hmm. and have that. So I just think like there's so many ways you can integrate analytics and coding into like all aspects of business and even art. So I love that you took a really interdisciplinary approach to business and art. Do you feel like that is something that you learned from the Honors College and being a student here? Yes, definitely. A lot of the professors here are very encouraging and they're very like, they want you to explore different avenues and fields outside of your like um, declared major. And one of the honors teachers, Tina Parachi, she hosted mm-hmm. the gallery this past uh, this semester, actually. And she invited me to speak and present my work. And just talking to her was like so inspiring. And she was like, oh, my God, like, I love this idea. Like, I could even speak to her friends that own galleries in like L.A. and stuff about this. And I was like, oh, wow, like everyone's just really supportive. And I think that definitely pushes you to innovate and think outside mm-hmm. of that normal subject and invent something like new and Mm -hmm. combine avenues together so yes definitely i think that's a really crucial aspect to the culture of both like the school of business and of the honors college is just that there is a lot of resources and there's a lot of mentors who like want to help you there's people who are on your side and it kind of curates like a an atmosphere of like innovation and getting to watch like your fellow students but also like your teachers like like tina parachi who are like blending different fields in ways that like you would have never thought would be possible Mm -hmm. and you guys have both kind of done that through all the organizations you've been in and all the different jobs you've had so oh carson i know that you led the association for information systems can you share some of the challenges but also the rewards of being in a leadership role Mm -hmm. oh yes it has (laughs) many challenges and many rewards um so i became the president of the association for information systems um, a lot of the reason was because all the officers graduated except for me during COVID. <laughs> you inherited it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was like, do I continue? Do I not continue? Um, I, I ended up feeling like it's important to have a club mm-hmm. for your major on campus. So I was like, okay, this, this needs to exist. I need to do something. <laughs> so it was a lot of the challenges. Well, firstly, it was me alone by myself at first and I had to like hire and manage a new team of like eight to ten people and that was also my first ever real people management Mm -hmm. experience so that was definitely a learning curve for me um I had to learn how to manage people lead meetings for the first time in my life and uh learn just how to deal with the the pressure of being mm-hmm. in the spotlight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, it really helped me with my public speaking. I had to lead a lot of meetings and also 
speak to prospective club members and invite them to join the club. So it definitely helped me with my leadership skills for sure. I really, it was a challenging time, but I'm really Mm -hmm. glad that I did it because I feel more comfortable like knowing how to be a leader. Mm -hmm. It's definitely worth it to like put yourself in those uncomfortable situations because it's definitely like creating a space for yourself to grow. How have you taken those skills into like other endeavors or experiences that you've done? Mm -hmm. Um, Let's see. One of the things that really helped me with, um, similar to public speaking, was also just my my people skills in Mm -hmm. general. I believe my my people skills shot through the roof while (laughs) while I was in college. So I I've used that to be able to network and meet a lot of people just in the College of Business. (laughs) Like I, Mm -hmm. there's nowhere I can go on campus anymore without running into someone that I know. (laughs) And I'd say uh, using those leadership skills became pretty important in my internship. Mm -hmm. When I was interning at City last summer, I worked on the same team with uh, another intern. And the our manager would essentially assign us both tasks and just let us figure out how to divide divide Mm -hmm. up the work (laughs) and um i try to be like an organized person so Mm -hmm. i i took it upon myself to like split up the work and essentially like lead the project (laughs) so i was able to use like those transferable skills i learned from my club and Mm -hmm. put them into the use in the workplace as well and then oh carson i know you use these leadership experiences and skills with your involvement in CEO and also the startup incubation program you're a part of. Can you tell us a little bit about those? One reason why I'm so excited to have developed those leadership skills with my role at the Association for Information Systems, because since I want to be a startup founder in the future, you're eventually going to be the CEO of your company (laughs) (laughs) if your company becomes successful. So you really need to practice like being the person managing the whole Mm -hmm. business. So in my senior year, I felt like I really needed to delve more into learning about entrepreneurship since I didn't double major or minor anything like that. So I eventually ended up joining the the CEO club at USF. It stands for the Collegiate Entrepreneurs Organization. And they host a lot of different professional events related to entrepreneurship. Like they have guest speakers, company tours, and even pitch competitions. So one of the things that I was able to do is really connect and meet a lot of the CEOs that the club brought in Mm -hmm. for as speaker events and talk to them a little bit more and learn about their experiences. I would ask them so many questions (laughs) and try to learn, you know, how was the process of starting your business for you? So that was really helpful for CEO. And for the startup incubation program I'm part of, Debut Labs, um, it's a very interesting process as well. So right now, um, it's me and I have my business partner on the team. And it's really interesting starting, trying to start a company for the first time because no one tells you what to do. (laughs) So you, if you're the person, the, the, the founder, the CEO, you have to be the one that organizes all the meetings, all the tasks, and set up schedules and to-do lists for all of your team members so that the organization can move forward. Mm-hmm. I got a lot of practice with that at AIS, so it definitely helps me um, with my role at the Startup, Startup Incubator as well. Hi, my name is Amanda Jakabowski, and I am a 2022 Honors College alum. If you are thinking about joining the Judy Genshaft Honors College, I would 100% recommend it. It was the best experience I had in college, and it allowed me to get the feeling of going to a small school while being at such a big university. Once you get here, I think it's so important to talk to as many people as you can and make as many connections as you can, because there's so many amazing people in the Honors College with so much to offer. And then Yuki, you exemplify leadership while being a TA for a financial accounting course. What valuable things did you learn about being a leader in that role? 
Yeah, so being a TA is definitely a very unique experience, and usually the fact that TA positions are offered for mostly graduate students. Yeah. So I was really honored when a professor I took a class with a year back reached out to me personally about becoming his TA, as well as TA for another professor, uh, Dr. Smith. And that process, I think, really developed the way that I speak and also the way that mm -hmm. I conduct myself. Because being a TA, not only are you there teaching students and like going over practice problems and helping them with any questions they have about that subject, at the same time, I was also taking classes and working a second job. Mm -hmm. So wow. it's like not only did I have to navigate that, especially during that transition between like COVID, because um, mm -hmm. I had to go into like the, the business room and set up um, a Teams meeting and be able to like film myself and <laughs> teach the problems on the board as well as like interacting with students like live in the classroom. Right. So it was a bit of both. And that I think was very like interesting because it's like these students are not like way younger than me. They're yeah. all like my age and even like older, you know? So it's like, like being able to stand up there and kind of teach them and just like getting to know them and answering them was like definitely like really like solidified like my interest in like becoming a professor later on. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about how you juggled two jobs and two majors and you were both and were continued to be extremely involved. How do you find balance between academics, extracurriculars and personal passions? Oh my gosh, yeah, balance is huge in my world, I feel like, because not only do I have to set timers, like, by the minute, I also have to, like, find focus on making sure that I get, like, plenty of rest mm -hmm. and, like, my mental health is strong to mm -hmm. do it. But I think it matters a lot, like, the things that I am doing. It really just drives me, like, mm -hmm. instead of it being, like, tasks that I have to do or things that I must go to, it's, like, things that I want to do and tasks that I want to get accomplished. So it's, like, that motivates me to just, like, do things one after another. And another thing, too, is, like, this is, like, my last year of college, and, I, like, I want to make the most of it. Like, I want to give mm -hmm. myself the most that I can because I feel like when you are just giving, like, eventually you'll receive and people do recognize that the work that you put in. And I feel like, like, when I was a TA and able to help others, people will recognize me, like, outside of the classroom and be like, oh, my God, like, you helped me with this. And then I even became, like, a private tutor for some people just because they were like, wow, like, you're so good at, like, teaching this. And, Aww. like, I like the way that you explain things like this. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And that just further is like, I feel like my understanding mm -hmm. of accounting and also how to explain these things to people that might not study it. So I feel like when you do things like this, you learn so much from other people. Absolutely. And then it's like, wow, like that's, yeah, that's so nice. And why not do that? So I definitely would have wanted you as my accounting <laughs> tutor. <laughs> would have gotten that A. <laughs> oh, yes. No, I did get that A. But yes. I think we all took... I think all of us in this room took Canis. Yes. I love yes, her. Yes. She's Canis. a great teacher. <laughs> and my yes. TAs were always really, yes. really strong, really yes. compassionate. Yes, yes, yes. Exactly. But you're right. They are all graduate students. So I'm mm -hmm. surprised to have seen yeah. an undergraduate yeah. student. And you were teaching a higher level course, not just an introductory yes. principal class. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was intermediate financial accounting. Oh, you wow. only take that if you're a declared mm -hmm. accounting major. Yeah. Yeah, so that was like really cool because I don't think I've ever met another undergraduate no, TA. No. So even my TAs like, were principal. Of, of they're like, all grad students. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. Go Yuki. First in the college. Oh, thank you. Congrats. <laughs> thank you. And actually, like really amazingly enough, Dr. Park reached out to me like a couple weeks ago to see if I wanted to continue being his TA after graduation. But I was like, oh, like I have my 150 and I'll be studying for the CPA. Mm -hmm. So. I won't be doing the master's program, but that was like just really thoughtful of him, you know. Um, I just wanted to ask, since you guys have done so much and it's really clear to me, like you love what you're doing. You're very fulfilled in what you're doing in college. How do you curate those experiences? How do you find where to not only get involved, but find the experiences that are meaningful to you? Because you can only do so much. So to to mm -hmm. concentrate that on things that you love. Oh, I see. Yes, that did take me some time to figure out. Um, when I first entered college, and likely a lot of students do something similar, you can end up going on on Bulls Connect or your mm -hmm. college club management yep. website and join like many different clubs and just go <laughs> to different events and see like like where are my people, mm -hmm. <laughs> which ones, which clubs do I like to go to? It took me about maybe 
two, three years of college to find um, the three organizations that I'm still part of today, the yeah. Association for Information Systems, Delta Sigma Pi, and the Collegiate Entrepreneurs Organization. For me, it was really just prioritization. Um, since I want to be a startup founder in the future, um, it became more and more important to me as my college years went on that I needed to mm -hmm. absorb like as much information as possible <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> before before leaving college. So it eventually, my interest eventually concentrated into just learning more about business and yeah. just meeting as many as people as I can and understanding how the business world works. So that's how I was able to like filter out other organizations yeah, yeah. that eventually I was like, ooh, this is cool. But not for me. <laughs> but I need yeah, to yeah, learn yeah. more. <laughs> yeah. If I could go back in time, though, I would have probably made more time in my college career to do like sports <laughs> and oh, yeah, intramurals. Yeah. Like um, I play tennis. Oh, <laughs> I would nice. have definitely joined the, the tennis club at mm -hmm. USF and participated in some of their activities. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like you definitely find yourself the more along your college journey. I've speaking of sports, I've been really into pickleball lately, nice. and that's been like my thing as of recently. Yeah. So it's you're not like, the first one on the podcast yeah, to bring up a lot of pickleballers. <laughs> yes, yes, it's crazy fun. It's such a good community, and I just actually designed the shirts for the USF pickleball oh, nice. team. So oh, nice! Oh, nice! Very okay. excited. I want to join yeah. now. <laughs> So the side quests are necessary. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. yes. It seems like that. Yeah, find those little moments of happiness and mm -hmm. then, like, you do your work alongside that. Yeah, you never know when those those instances are going to come up and you find, like, oh, I really like this position, and then you mm -hmm. grow in that role. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So mm -hmm. speaking to business students, getting internships and work experience is crucial prior to graduating. Can you share what things you did to help you guys get internships and how you are taking those with you into the future? Yeah, I feel like internships, at least in the accounting field, you have to be really proactive. Mm -hmm. Usually people get their internships at least a year on out, yes. and then hopefully they get offers after that. So I, the accounting, um, not just the accounting, sorry, the business like career fairs are really essential mm -hmm. to go to, and they're a good way to meet other firms and pass out your resumes and see what opportunities are really out there. So definitely take advantage of that. Yeah, for sure. Internships are extremely important. I don't even think the word has gotten out there enough to business <laughs> students. <laughs> like, I'd say they're, they're as important as your schoolwork, even. Absolutely. And what I personally did, I, I was very aware of this, <laughs> even <laughs> as, as a freshman. One of the things um, that really helped me was joining the student organization for my major mm -hmm. in the second half of my freshman year because through that, I was able to meet some seniors and juniors within my major and learn about the internships and full-time jobs that they were getting. And seeing how far they could get as mm -hmm. a freshman really motivated me. And I was like, okay, so these internships are important. <laughs> they got them. I need to learn how to get them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I ended up talking to a lot of students within my major. I connected with everyone on LinkedIn and learned, like, which of companies hire USF students. Yeah. And then I was also very involved with the Bellini Center on campus, which is essentially a career services office exclusively for business students that focuses on helping them get internships. I was there all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I attended a lot of resume reviews, coaching sessions and I also attended a lot of events where different different companies that want to hire USF students actually come on campus and discuss their internship and full-time mm -hmm. jobs. That was eventually how I ended up finding about finding about City because they actually came, they had one of their recruiters for their Tampa office come to USF and talk about the roles they had available and I was like Ooh, I've been doing my resume for a while. <laughs> Let me apply. <laughs> and uh, it eventually ended up working out. I did the interviews. I went through the whole process mm -hmm. and ended up getting the internship. Nice. Congratulations. And that has translated to your full-time position, which you'll be starting in the summer, correct? Exactly. Yeah. So I think um, City hired quite a few interns yes. from USF, mm -hmm. actually, 
there were, I believe there were about three business analytics majors and maybe some more computer science yeah, students. Computer science. Mm-hmm. And yeah, the internship lasts from three months from June to August for me in 2023. And then if you perform well in your internship, you have the opportunity to receive a full-time role secured before you graduate. Nice, <laughs> so nice. that was really cool for me. I got to relax and focus mm-hmm. on other things during my <laughs> senior year. Yeah, Enjoy your last semester. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. And then Yuki... You had an internship, I believe, at Ernst & Young, correct? How was that experience? Yes. Um, I've actually had a couple internship offers. That summer, BDO also gave me an offer. But mm-hmm. this internship with Ernst & Young is actually very unique. And most of the ways um, accounting goes, there's usually three fields, auditing, consulting, and then tax. This field is actually in consulting, and it's called MRC. And you work with um, basically auditing, like media relations, and making sure advertisements are what they say in the contracts and where they are. So this past internship was really nice. um, And I'm actually excited to work with them in winter of 2025. Wonderful. Oh, congratulations. congratulations. Wow. Yes. It's yeah, so yeah, exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And it's nice because I'm a part of Beta Alpha Psi, which is like the accounting fraternity at USF. Mm-hmm. And EY is always there. They always sponsor them. So I got to see a couple mm-hmm. of the folks I'll be working with again. And yeah, that's really nice. 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 What I've learned as a business student is that just showing up to these events is super important mm-hmm. and making yes. connections with those recruiters and with people that work there, even just like reaching out to people via LinkedIn and being like, would you be willing to hop on a quick call and getting yes. to know them? Mm-hmm. Making those connections is super it's essential. Who you know. It is really mm-hmm. who you know, especially in the business world. Exactly. So with that, what advice would you give to fellow students who aspire to be as successful as you and even to be part of the 25 under 25? I think my advice is definitely like to connect with others and you never know who you're going to see and who like is going to help you in the future and just being like yourself and personable and doing things that you find passion in not like not what anyone else is telling you or what Mm -hmm. like others are telling you to pursue but if you do things that you want to and you put in all of your effort and like people will recognize that and yeah for me i definitely say Two words. Get involved. <laughs> yes. Round of applause. Yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> Mic drop moment. <laughs> yeah, it is it is extremely important that you get involved in various organizations and extracurricular activities on campus because, you know, as we said earlier, if you're applying for internships and full-time jobs, mass applying can only get you so far. Yeah. It's also important to network and have connections Mm -hmm. with other people. And getting involved in different student organizations at USF is really important because not only do you get to learn about what other students are doing, but when you get to see what other students who came before you have done, it really, like, Mm -hmm. motivates you and sets the bar high. Like, oh, this person can do this. I'm friends with them. Mm -hmm. I bet I could do that, too. (laughs) (laughs) And it really helps Uh, push you further. Absolutely. And always, always follow up, whether it's through an email or a text. It keeps in mind that you remember that conversation and that moment you shared with them and also keeps the employers like they notice you and presence is really important in the business field. Looking back on your amazing college careers, is there something you would have done differently or a piece of advice you would give to your younger self? Ooh, and a piece of advice I would give to my younger self is definitely start using a calendar earlier. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Time management is really important. Everyone already talks about time management Mm -hmm. so much, but I think that something specific you can do to help with that is use some type of calendar or schedule Mm -hmm. and write things down. That really makes things concrete because you have a time when you need to do it instead of just a super long Mm to-do list. (laughs) Yeah, blocking out like timed chunks in your calendar I feel like really helps. Are you more of like a Google Calendar, like a notes app? Like what's your go-to software? Ooh, okay. (laughs) Tells a lot about a person. (laughs) (laughs) Oh boy, okay. So I do something very unique. (laughs) I used to use a 
physical planner. Oh, I used mm-hmm. to write, and it had like every hour of the day I would write old that fashioned. stuff. Yeah. And then it was old fashioned, and I became tired of writing. It became too complicated. Yeah. So I was like, I looked at Google Calendar, and I was like, I don't like that. Mm-hmm. Let me figure out some way to bring my physical planner on my computer. So eventually what I ended up doing was recreating the physical planner in Excel. I knew you were going <laughs> <laughs> And I used like Excel spreadsheets with every hour of the day and <laughs> use it use that as my calendar. This is so business core. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you should sell those on Etsy. People like make a ton of money selling like calendar PDFs. Yeah, yeah the, the, oh the template. <laughs> Yeah, it's another mine. startup. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Personally, I'm a Notion user. I don't know if Ooh. you guys have heard of that, but I have. it actually integrates with Google Calendar. So, oh, I need a little I plug need there this. for Notion. <laughs> 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 All right, it has been super insightful as a business student and really just an honor student to be a part of this conversation. Thank you so much for being on the podcast to you both. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank it's you for having us. It was wonderful. And we're back in the studio. It was so great to hear from O. Carson and Yuki about their journey to being awarded with 25 Under 25. What do you think about the podcast today, Fabi? Well, I thought it was really insightful, especially as a business student, not only to learn about their journey, but all the experiences that they've Mm -hmm. had and, you know, how to get more involved, especially considering that this will be like my second year here. And I am really interested and I'm looking forward to applying for the program next year as well. Yeah, I think it's really great to just share with other students like what is possible. And so getting to see the journeys of two students who have done a huge variety of things is is really great for all the students who are listening. And if anyone is looking to get more involved with things on campus, don't forget to check out the Honor Roll newsletter and our website at usf.edu forward slash honors for all upcoming events, updates and news. That will do it for this week's episode. The Honor Roll Podcast is recorded in the Judy Genshaft Honors College at the University of South Florida Tampa campus. Production assistance is provided by honor student Abby Malloy and Professor Adam Davidson. Thank you all so much for listening. Please do not forget to rate and review our podcast. We really appreciate your feedback. Tune in next week for more stories from the Judy Genshaft Honors College. Until next time, go Bulls!